friends, how you doing? Are you back again? Let's talk some 3D vectors again. We've been talking 3D vectors for a while, and all we're doing is taking 3D vectors and finding ways to break them up into I, J, and K components, right? Into X, Y, and Z components. So far we've done good. We've talked about blue triangles, right? And we have some equations for that. We talked about directional cosines. We have some equations for that. And the last one, the last method, the third way, and really and truly, probably the most common way in statics, all the problems from here on throughout the semester, you may see a few of these, maybe a couple of those, but most 99% of them are going to be this kind of problem. And that's, that's angles given with coordinates, given with dimensions, okay? And we're going to use something I like to call the lambda hat method, okay? The lambda hat method. Hibbler, and if you're following the Hibbler book, he calls it capital bold U for like big unit vector. But if, so if you see me use this, this is the same thing that Hibbler calls big U, okay? Big U, which is just unit vector. So wait a minute. I know, I know that I hat is in the x direction and j hat's in the y direction and k hat's in the z direction. But what the heck is lambda hat? The hat tells me, number one, that it's a unit vector. It has a magnitude of one, but where is it? Okay, and I'm telling you that lambda hat is in the direction of the force vector that you're looking for. So lambda hat is, can have i's, j's, and k's in him, right? He can have all three of them. But again, if I square them, square them, square them, take the square root of all the components there, I better get one, right? Because it's a unit vector, it's still a length or, or size, a magnitude of one, okay? So the easiest way to show you how to use this lambda hat method is just do a problem and show you. I think it's the easiest way. Okay, so look at this little simple problem. I got a telephone pole, whoop, and it's 80 meters tall, and it has a guy wire that goes from the top of the pole at point A down here to the ground at point B, okay? The problem says, find the force vector acting on point A. Now, wait a minute. Isn't this the vector acting on point A the same vector that's acting on point B? Well, yeah, it is, actually. But if I'm point A, I feel something pulling down on me. If I'm point B, I feel the rope pulling up on me, right? So you're going to get the exact same answer if you do it the backwards way, but all of your signs will be backwards, and that's no good. Ain't nobody got time for that, okay? So here's what we're looking for is this little force vector that's acting on the top of the pole up here, okay? And guess what? There's our little lambda hat, right? He's in the direction of the vector, the force vector that we're looking for, okay? So they give us that the tension in this cable is 2,500 newtons. So knowing that the tension, which is the magnitude of the tension, yeah, but of that, of that 2,500, right, how much of it's in the X? How much of it's in the Y? And how much of it's in the Z? Well, that's what we're fixing to find out, okay? So to use the lambda hat method, you need to know this. Vector F is equal to, there's another equation, but it's super easy, right? That says vector F. What is a vector? Vector has what? Magnitude and direction, okay? So in this case, vector F is equal to 2,500 times lambda hat, and I'm going to call lambda hat AB, okay? And I like to be very intentional in 3D. I like to be very intentional about the way that I use those letters right there, right? Because that force vector goes from A to B, right? Goes from A to B. So I'm going to call it AB. If it went from B to A, I would call it BA, okay? And I'll tell you why right here, okay? I've got to figure out how to calculate lambda, okay? Now, lambda is size 1. Let's say I had 273. How do I turn 273 into one. Mm. Ooh, I could divide it by itself, couldn't I? 273 divided by 273 is one, right? And that's exactly what we do to find lambda hat, right? So lambda hat, AB, is simply vector AB, okay? And vector AB is like how you get from point A to point B. How do you get from there to there? I call it how you get to grandma's house, right? You live here, and Grandma lives down there. She's got a big glass of sweet tea waiting for you. If you can get from here 
down to there, right? How do you get there? That's all a, vector AB is. And then I want to divide vector AB by the magnitude of vector AB. That's it. Now I'm going to show you right here this little trick, okay? So vector AB, how do I find AB? Well, you do B minus A. And I kind of think of it, right, it's backwards. If I find an AB, it's B minus A, okay? So here we go. So B minus A. And now here's the hard part. You have to come up with the coordinates of the points. That's not really the hard part. Okay, what's the coordinates of point B? Well, let's see over there. Hmm, B, do you know? You don't know, do you? That's the easy part. You're supposed to know. <laughs> I bet we know. Here we go. Negative 40 in the x direction, right? I got to go negative 40 to get back there. Then positive 60 in the y. And then it's on ground level, so the z value is zero. And then, of course, vector or point A rather is on top of the pole, which is zero, zero, and 80. Okay. So here we go. Negative 40 minus 0 is negative 40, a uh hat. -huh. 60 minus 0 is 0, uh, is 0. It's 60, j hat. And then 0 minus 80 is minus 80, k hat. Okay? So there you go. That, that, my friends, is vector AB. That's how you get to Grandma's house. Look at there. You go 40 negative in the x. Then you go 60 positive in the Y, and then you go downhill, boom, and you're at Grandma's house. You're sipping some sweet tea right there, baby. All right, here we go. Next, divided by the magnitude of vector AB. So divided by 40 squared plus 60 squared plus 80 squared. Look how careless I was with my signs there. doesn't matter. You're squaring them all. They're all going to go positive anyway. Okay, so 40 squared plus 60 squared plus 80 squared equals square root of the answer, 107.7. Statics Radio, 107.7. Tune in now for some static. Oh, that would be bad, wouldn't it? So here we go. 40 divided by 107.7 equals 0.371. Hat, and then six, oh, and that's negative, isn't it? Because our answer has to be negative, positive, negative, okay? Um, and then what do we have? We have 60, 60, divided by 107.7, 0.557, so plus 0.557 J hat, one more, and that is 80 divided by 107.7 equals 0.743, okay, and that, my friends, is lambda AB, okay, there he is. Ooh, how big is that? It's one. Ooh, how could you check it? How could you check it? Well, you could square that, square that, square that, add them together, take square root, and you better get one. Man, you should never miss a unit vector, right? Because you can put it in your calculator and just square it, square it, square it, take a square root, and if it's not one, you have screwed up, right? All right, so we take this unit vector, and all we got to do is take that unit vector and multiply it by 2,500, okay? So I'm going to bring him up here. Here we go. Negative 0.371 I hat plus 0.557 minus... 0.743, okay, and do a little multiplying. So the force on point A, we'll call it the force on point A, right, is equal to 2,500 times 0.371 equals 927.5.
And it's negative, right? Because I multiplied a negative times a positive, right? 0.557 times 2,500. 1392.5. J hat. And then 0.74, golly, 743 times 2,500. 1857.5 K hat. And that whole entire vector is going to be Newtons. Okay? Okay, you're so smart, right? I got a question for you. You ready? What happens if you square that, square that, and square that, and take the square root? What do you get? <laughs> you know what you get? You get 2,500, right? Because what did we do here? We just multiplied 2,500 times, times 1, right? A unit vector is, is 1. So the magnitude of this thing here is still 2,500. It hasn't changed. But what we're telling you is, is that 927.5 of those Newtons are in the, in the, the, the uh, x direction, in the negative x direction. 1,392.5 of those Newtons are in the positive y, and then negative 1857.5 of those Newtons are in the negative z, right? And does that make sense? Negative, positive, negative? Look here. Well, that vector is pulling into that back quadrant, which is in the negative x, the positive y, and it's going downhill, the negative z. So a little quick sign check never killed anybody, right? It's so good to do just to verify that you didn't drop a sign somewhere. Because I tell you, that's a pretty common mistake, okay? And that's really it. That's what we call the lambda hat method, right? So can you write a unit vector? And then all you got to do is multiply a magnitude times unit vector, and that's the answer. That's easy, right? And then what do we have? We have a vector that's in I, J, and K. Can we add that to a blue triangle? Yeah, because I can get that into I, J, K. Can I add it to a direction? Yeah, because I can get that into an I, J, K. That's all it's about. You know what we're ready to do now? Dude, we're ready to work some problems. Let's go.